What is going on guys, your boy Tech Guy Charlie here. So one of the most anticipated updates for the Galaxy Note 10 Plus and the Galaxy S10 Plus is out. This is the One UI 2.1 update for both of these phones. And this update is awesome because this one brings a lot of new features on the new flagship which is the Galaxy S20 onto the Galaxy Note 10 series and the S10 series. And by the way, if you are wondering, both of these phones are unlocked international Exynos version. All right, started downloading the update on the Note 10 Plus. By the way, the size of the update is quite huge. It's about 1.7 gigabytes. So quite a massive update for this phone. Anyway, I'm quite excited. This does bring a lot of new camera features from the S20. But yeah, we will check all of these new features out once the update is complete. And I'm not gonna make a separate video about the S10 Plus. I think it will be a little bit too repetitive because it is the exact same thing. So if you have the Galaxy S10 Plus, watch this video because it is the exact same thing. All right, so the update is now complete. Lots of sunlight coming into my room, that's awesome. Alright, so let us go ahead and unlock the phone. So we are running One UI version 2.1. So this is the new One UI version. This is the same version which is on the Galaxy S20 series. So now let us check out all the new features that are included with this update. And as always, I'm going to start off with the camera. Now when you are in the photo mode, and if you want to record a quick video, you actually don't need to change the camera mode from photo to video. With this update, you just have to press and hold the camera shutter button and the camera will record a video in Full HD. So this is something similar to what you have on Snapchat and on Instagram stories. Press and hold the camera shutter button and the camera will record a video for you. And you can actually move your finger around. So as long as your finger is on the screen, the camera will continue recording a video and as soon as you release it the video recording stops now you guys may ask what is the resolution of the video well it's in full hd this mode only does full hd not 4k videos so this is an awesome feature it kind of eliminates one extra step of going into video to record a video and it also works in landscape mode so now we are recording a video in landscape awesome right previously if you guys remember when you used to press and hold the camera shutter button the camera would take gif images or it would take burst shots that feature is still there so if we go to settings it is now called swipe shutter button to edge 2 there are two options take burst shots or create gif and the way you make it work is by swiping down like this so now the camera is recording a gif image goes up to 30 frames so this is the GIF image that I just created and if I set this to burst shots again swipe down like this and the camera will quickly capture 100 images. So all of the functionality is available a slightly different way to access it. And also if you guys enjoy watching my videos then do support my channel by hitting that subscribe button and after that hit that bell icon and select all so that you can get notifications to my latest uploads and also make sure to follow me on instagram and on facebook i do post a lot of content over here all the links are in the video description so moving on the next feature in the camera that i'm gonna show you is in the dedicated video mode now you can actually switch cameras between the front and the rear camera while you are recording a video just like you can on snapchat so this is one of the most requested feature on galaxy smartphones it is now being added with the one ui 2.1 update so i'm just going to start recording a video and you can see over there press on this button to switch the camera from rear to front hey there so that feature, so this was one of the most requested features on uh, Samsung Galaxy smartphones and you can press it again to change the camera back to rear. Awesome. Okay, slight change in the scene. I've kept this candle over here so that there is something for the phone to focus on. Otherwise, it was getting confused with the autofocus. Anyways, moving on, the next major upgrade that the Galaxy Note 10 and the S10 Plus gets is with the front-facing camera. The front-facing camera now has the ability to record videos at 4K at 60 FPS. So if you love butter smooth videos at high resolution, the front-facing camera is now capable of doing that. So we will go to settings and front video size. We will change it to 16 is to 9. And there you go. There is a new feature 4K 60 FPS and full HD 60 FPS. So these two settings are new. So that is awesome. Now the 
front facing camera can also record videos at 4K60. And I can confirm it is recording at 4K60, the video is butter smooth, gotta love that. Okay, so moving on, the next feature I'm gonna show you is actually not a new feature. It was already there on previous generation Samsung smartphones, but it was taken out. Well, I'm talking about the Pro Video Mode. So this feature was actually available on the Galaxy Note 9 and the S9. Unfortunately, it was taken out after the Android 9 update. And now Samsung is adding this feature back again on their smartphones with the One UI 2.1 update. I really hope to see this feature back on the Galaxy Note 9 and the S9. Fingers crossed, if it does, I will make a video. So Pro Video gives you manual control of the camera's ISO, the shutter speed, the camera's aperture, then you also have temperature, tint, contrast, saturation, and highlight and shadow settings. Let's go back. Then you also have the ability to change the camera's focus while you're recording a video. And that green outline you can see that is the peaking level. You will see it over here as I adjust. So that is focus peaking. The phone kind of lets you know which part of the uh, picture is in focus. Then you can also change the white balance. Now the thing is, I've actually tested this feature out. It's sort of very limited. So right now I've set the ISO to 250, shutter speed 1 by 500 and manual focus. Now as soon as I hit the record button, these three settings will get disabled. So as soon as I start recording, you can see these three are now disabled. The only setting that I can change over here is the phone's autofocus. So I can manually adjust the focus and change the white balance. So don't really compare this to a DSLR. The functionality is actually quite limited. But one thing I do like is the ISO does not actually change. So even if I covered up the camera, the ISO still remains 250. So sort of semi manual control over here. Uh, I would like to see full manual control where I am able to change the ISO while I'm recording the video. But yeah, this is a step in the right direction. Samsung actually removed this feature from the previous phones. Now they're adding it back. Hopefully in the future, we will see more updates to the pro video mode. But for now, this is what you get. So moving on, let's go to hyperlapse. There's a new feature here called night hyperlapse. Now night hyperlapse kind of improves the low light quality of hyperlapse. So here's a quick demo. The first 10 seconds you will see is before the update. So I just recorded a quick video of the stars. You can like barely see anything. Everything is botched up. The hyperlapse video has a lot of noise. And now this is with the night hyperlapse turned on. You can see there's a massive difference when it comes to quality after you turn on night hyperlapse. I feel like the Note 10 Plus has got a brand new life after this update. Oh, and by the way guys, the night hyperlapse video that you just saw were actually shot on the S10 Plus. So I thought I'd also do a video with this phone just to diversify this video because I'm also covering the S10 Plus in this video itself. But the video quality is exactly the same between these two phones. One of the signature features of the Galaxy S20 series was single take mode. And yes, single take mode has also been added to the Galaxy Note 10 and the S10. And it shows here, welcome to single take where your camera automatically captures a wide variety of pictures and clips from any scene. And it will automatically do cropping, it will capture ultra wide pictures, smart crops, it will automatically add a filter, and it will automatically make a video out of those photos. Now as far as I know, the way this feature works is by utilizing all three cameras at the back of the phone. So all you have to do is just press the shutter button once and the phone says capturing meaningful moments. Obviously this feature will work better if you have people in the photo and if you're capturing landscapes but since I can't go out right now, uh, this will have to do. So once a picture has been captured, the phone uses AI to process the picture and as you can see this is a still shot, this is a 9 second video. This is a still shot, slightly different aspect ratio compared to this one. And this is again, uh, so this is a boomerang type of a video. And then this is another video. So this is how single take works. Actually, there's a better uh, single take shot on this phone. And inside the gallery for single take photos, you will see this little round icon. So this is a single take that I took on this phone. Again, there's a photo, there's a quick video, there's a photo in slightly different aspect ratio, 
there is a photo with a filter so this is black and white again another photo with a different aspect ratio and this is a fast forward video not exactly black and white slightly different kind of a filter then wide angle photo a fast forward video no this is a boomerang video so you can see that icon over there and here's another one now unfortunately because of the lockdown i cannot exactly go to the park right now so i apologize otherwise i would have done a better job of showing you guys how this feature works but yeah this is how the single take feature works uh, it will show you a single photo like this and then when you press on this it has multiple photos and you can share them according to your liking you can share it on instagram or press this button to share these pictures anywhere you like guess what i'm still not done showing you guys all the new camera features so let us go to the photo mode then tap on this icon over here and there's a new feature here called my filters now this feature allows you to create a filter from your very own photos turn any shot into a custom filter select a sample below to try it out so let's try out this this one and tap on next and the phone will analyze the photo and apply a filter so you guys can see kind of applied a filter let's go back try out the black and white next and as you can see that's a black and white filter let's try this one see it kind of analyzes the colors in the photo and it sets the colors accordingly so i'm just going to press save filter now it says here tap here to make custom filters from your own pictures so actually i can tap on the filter icon here and make my very own custom filters okay let's try this picture it's got a fairly yellow tint to it so i think we, we will get a yellowish filter and there you go so yes this feature kind of allows you to set a custom filter let's crop the photo and select only the flower and see if anything changes save oh yeah that's a little bit more yellow and if you want to delete something press and hold and that will allow you to delete your own filters one ui 2.1 update also brings a new feature called smart selfie angle so go to settings and make sure this feature is turned on so what smart selfie angle does is that it automatically switches to the wide angle camera that is in the front facing camera when it detects that two or more people are in the frame so let's go to front facing camera so by default it kind of goes into the zoomed in mode so as soon as the camera detects that there is a second face it will automatically go to the wide angle mode so that's kind of useful uh, you don't actually have to switch it yourself the camera does that for you so that is the smart selfie angle okay so since we are already talking about selfies and the front facing camera let me also show you another new feature yes there are a lot of new features with the one ui 2.1 update so we will go to settings scroll down there's a new feature called selfie tone add a warm or cool tint to your selfies so this kind of allows you to set a preset color tint so this is cool original and warm so this is kind of nice i like to keep my color tone to warm so i will set that so now whenever the camera detects my face it will automatically apply a warm tint so you can see it kind of turns off when i pan my camera over here and as soon as it detects my face it will apply a slightly warm color tone when you update your galaxy smartphone to one ui 2.1 you will notice a new icon over here called ar zone also this can be accessed through the camera so we will go to more and we have ar zone over here it is the exact same thing you can access it from over here or you can also access this through the ar zone icon so there's a dedicated icon for this no need to open up the camera now on the previous version this was called ar emoji and everything was kind of botched up over here so you have stickers ar emoji at the same place this time what samsung has done is that they have added all the ar stuff into one single place so you have your ar emoji camera you have your ar doodle ar emoji studio your stickers your deco pic 3d scanner everything quick measure everything is there and this is the exact same feature we had right uh, which was over here these stickers so yes these are still available uh, you can still uh, download them if you like 
you can press that store icon and you can download more stickers from over here i'm not a huge ar fan so i can't really show you all that much i haven't even created my uh, own character on any of my phones but yeah check this out <laughs> so you can have these cute little animals so yeah the ar features are still available uh, just a brand new menu everything is bunched up at one single place so that was a rundown of 11 features that are new on the Galaxy S10 Plus and the Note 10 Plus with the One UI 2.1 update. Now I'm going to move on to the other features that are new. So if we drop down the notification panel, you will notice two major new features called Quick Share and Music Share. I'm going to start off by showing you Quick Share. Now Quick Share utilizes your phone's Wi-Fi to send files to another Galaxy smartphone. Now the thing is you need a Galaxy smartphone which is running One UI 2.1. If you use an older smartphone, it will not work. So actually I tried sending over some files to my Galaxy Note 9, it did not work. It only works with phones that are running One UI 2.1 and above. Alright, so now let me show you how it works. So there are two options here, contacts and everyone so that needs to be set up i'll set it to everyone that's okay and you can set a custom phone name over here i'm gonna leave it at galaxy s10 plus and that is pretty much all you need to do leave this functionality turned on and on my recipient smartphone i'm gonna drop down drop down your notification panel and make sure this setting is turned on and it's set to everyone and the phone name is note 10 plus and that is pretty much all i need to do over here and now I'm going to go to my gallery and pick a video file. So let's pick this one. Uh, this was, this is a fairly big video, 233 megabytes. And I'm going to press the share button. And it shows up automatically over here. See this quick share icon. And there is my phone Galaxy Note 10 Plus. And as soon as I tap that, I will get a prompt over here. Galaxy S10 Plus wants to send one file to you and accept and the speed is actually really really good check that out that's a 230 megabyte file barely took like three seconds so this feature uses your phone's wi-fi to send and receive files that's the big advantage of this uh, quick share feature you can send over large files fairly quickly and you can actually use a file manager to send over files so I can also use my ASUS file manager pick a file from over here and send it over you don't really need to go to gallery so you can send pretty much any file be it music movies photos videos whatever all right so moving on the next new feature I'm gonna show you is music share that's why I've got my Bluetooth speaker out here so drop down the notification panel and here you will find music share tap on it to go to music share settings so what music share does is that it allows you to share your bluetooth speaker or a bluetooth headphone with your friend uh, you don't actually need to give full control of the speaker so you don't have to go through the pairing process with the speaker you can just share your phone's bluetooth connection with your friend and your friend will be able to play music on the speaker but the music will play through your phone so the friend is not actually directly connected to the bluetooth speaker so if you don't want to give full control of your bluetooth speaker or your bluetooth headphones to your friend you can use the music share function to temporarily share your speaker with your friend so now let me demonstrate how music share works so first off we will need to pair a bluetooth speaker or a bluetooth headphone i've already paired my sony speaker with my galaxy note 10 plus now the second thing you need to do is go into music share so we will go to music share and make sure this setting is turned on and share devices with everyone is okay i am not going to do contacts then ask for permission that's a good idea every time is okay disconnect when nothing is playing 10 minutes also looks like it's okay i'll set it at 30 minutes so now on the second phone we will need to pair so we will turn on bluetooth bluetooth is already turned on we'll go to bluetooth settings and scan for devices so here we go music share is now showing up it says srs xp20 via galaxy note 10 plus so when i tap on this this phone will actually connect to my note 10 plus so galaxy s10 plus wants to connect to your srs xp20 so now that everything is set up properly, whenever I play music on my Galaxy S10 Plus, it will relay the Bluetooth connection to my Note 10 Plus, then the Note 10 Plus will relay it back to the speaker. So check this out guys. I 
can change the volume from here and I can also change the volume from my Note 10 Plus. So I'm just going to keep the phone over here. So actually, even though the Galaxy S10 Plus is playing back the music, I can still control the volume from my main phone. And now if I play back music on this phone, this will stop. One downside of this feature is that this uh, music share feature does require you to run one UI version 2.1. So I will just uh, disconnect this thing. So you guys can see the Galaxy Note 9 is unfortunately not able to locate the speaker or the music share functionality. It would have shown up over here like it did on the S10 Plus. That's because this is not running the latest version of One UI. I hope this feature comes to this phone. Fingers crossed. So let us carry on with the video because I'm still not done showing you guys all the new features. So the next two new features are in the gallery. By the way, if you want this case, the link is in the video description. Yes, I have started using a case with my phone. Don't want the phone to get damaged. Uh, by the way, this video is not sponsored by the makers of this case. Anyways, let us go into the gallery and you will see a new square icon over here. Now, as soon as you press this square icon, the phone will group up similar looking pictures into one thumbnail. So as you can see, these pictures are kind of similar looking even though it's a slightly different angle. So these pictures have been grouped up into one single thumbnail and you can still access all your photos by tapping on that thumbnail. So this kind of lets you declutter your gallery uh, by grouping pictures into one single thumbnail. And if you press on this again, it will go back to how it was before. Sometimes you might want to email a picture to your friend or upload it to a website, but you might find the size of the picture is a little bit too big. So for example, this is a two megabyte photo. The resolution is quite high. Some websites do not accept such high resolution photos. So what you can do is press on the edit icon, then press on these three dots and then tap on resize image. So this resize image is new and this kind of gives you quick resize options. So this is the original size can resize it to let's uh, let's resize it to 60% tap on done and then tap on save so this is our resized photo you can see it's only 570 kilobytes so it will be much easier to upload this photo on a website or mail it to your friend oh and another feature I have noticed just now is that if you open up a picture and then tap on the pencil icon tap on these three dots and there's a new feature over here called style so these are just pre-installed filters in the photo editor and this is something that I really like uh, this was not there before because uh, this phone does not have it so if I press on the pencil icon tap on these three dots that style option is not available so this is also something that is new so there are three new features in the gallery let's move on with this upgrade Samsung has also updated the glitter effect in the edge lighting so we will do a quick comparison so this is how it looks like now. This is how it used to look like. So I think the newer one is better. Uh, the colors are more visible. It's a little bit more bright. Oh yes, definitely the newer one is better. Glad to see they have updated this. Looks really nice. Let us go back into the display settings. And you guys can see the dark mode toggle is at the top of the display settings over here. Previously, we didn't have that. So previously, it used to look like this. And the dark mode toggle is inside another sub menu. So they've kind of changed it. Uh, and one more thing that I like is the smooth transition. So check that out. That looks really nice. We didn't have this smooth transition before. So if I turn it on, it just turns on, turn off. It just turns off so that's so there's no smooth transitioning effect now we have this smooth transitioning effect and this will take you to the dark mode setting another change I've noticed is that when you pinch in on the display and tap on wallpapers you will see an option here apply dark mode to wallpaper uh, this is the exact same option apply to wallpaper they've just re relocated it to over here and if I turn off and turn back on you guys will see that it actually does work so the functionality is the same the location of the setting has changed with the one UI 2.1 update you can now set a custom background in the messaging app 
So let us open up Samsung Messages. By the way, this is your regular text messaging app. So I will open up my own contact and then I will press on these three dots and I will tap on customize wallpaper. So from over here, you can add a background or you can pick a custom picture from your gallery. So I can actually set this as a background done and then press on done. So that's a custom background for my contact. So here's the fun part. This particular background will not show up in other messaging threads. So if I open up another messaging thread on another contact, see the background is not there. So each and every individual contact will have its own custom background. So you will need to actually set a custom wallpaper from over here. So that's pretty cool. You can set a picture of a person as a background so that you know who you're texting to. So guys, we are almost at the end of this video. And for my final feature, I'm going to go to my recents and you guys can see I have a couple of applications open. And if I tap on the icon, you will see a new feature which says keep open for quick launching. But in fact, this is not actually a new feature. This was already there. It has been renamed. So on one UI version two, which is the previous version, if you open up your recents and tap on the app icon, it opens up this menu. Now this menu is the exact same thing which opens up over here. They've just changed the location. Now this feature keep open for quick launching is actually same as lock this app. So they have just renamed it. If you turn this feature on, the phone will keep that particular app in the RAM even if you force close every one of these apps. So for demonstration purposes, I have selected the keep open for quick launching on WhatsApp. Now I'm going to press close all, but you guys will see WhatsApp is still running in the background. So that's an easy way to keep apps running in your RAM even though other apps are now closed. So a big advantage of keeping apps in the RAM is that they will open up instantly. So the app will not reload even though you have selected the close option from over here. Another thing that I have just noticed is that whenever you unlock your phone using your fingerprint, there is a new animation that plays back over here. So check this out. See that circle that goes around. So that's a new unlock animation. Oh, and one last thing, let us go back into the display settings, scroll down and tap on screen zoom. And you guys can see on fun UI 2.1, we have five step screen zoom. So this one just makes everything bigger on the screen. I like to keep it at smallest setting. So there's a five step screen zoom. Previously, we had a three step screen zoom. Now, one thing that is sort of missing that I saw on the S20 series is live caption. So if you press the volume button on the S20 series, you will get a live caption uh, toggle button over here. So that creates automatic subtitles for any media that is playing back on your phone. Unfortunately, Samsung has not included it with this update. I could not find it in the settings. So unfortunately, I could not find live caption even in the hearing enhancements. So if I go to subtitle setting, there are two options, Samsung subtitles and Google subtitles. The live caption feature is unfortunately missing from my phone at least. So if you guys know how to turn on live caption, let me know in the comment section down below. Other than that, this update is fantastic. Everything is working nice and smooth. The phone is working great. And personally, I am really enjoying all the new camera features that Samsung has added with this update. All right, guys, so that pretty much wraps it up for this video. I hope you've enjoyed. And if you did enjoy, don't forget to hit that subscribe and that like button. And then don't forget to follow me on social media. All the links are in the video description. So thank you guys for watching. Do stay tuned for more videos on these phones. I will see you guys next time.